13, England 7. Well, let's hear from a man who's been on the touchline today for England, Gareth Archer. He's talking with Graham Simmons. Gareth Archer, for the first time in three weeks, it almost feels good to be English again. That's the best 40 minutes of rugby on tour. It is. It's absolutely fantastic. Uh, the guys have came out there, you know, they've really fired at them. You know, they've, they've played it very, very well. They tried it out wide for a while, nothing was happening. Um, so they've, they've brought it back in. The back row are playing well, hunting together as a pack, and they're hitting it off the areas around 10 and 9 where the All Blacks are soft and getting in behind them. And I think we're very unlucky not to come away on level terms after that first half with the last, the last break on the line. I'm almost feeling nervous here. How are you feeling? Very, very nervous. I mean, it, it is a bit of a surprise, but the boys out there are warriors and they're here to upset the party. OK, thanks very much, Gareth. Enjoy the second half. Mark, all yours. Thank you, Gareth. Thanks, Graham. Well, is it in the realms of possibility that England can somehow beat the All Blacks in New Zealand? We're about to find out the second half coming up. Let's hand you back to the commentators, Stuart Barnes and Mars Harrison. Well, that must have been a much more comfortable half-time team talk for Woodward and Mitchell. Wellington went forward, they varied their game, they played with commitment, and they have hit the soft belly of New Zealand. They haven't tackled well around 10, and they are not tight in the tight. But, and Spencer is on. Carlos Spencer has come on to play in this second half, a change in midfield for New Zealand and that was looking pretty obvious. Yeah, I wasn't impressed with the New Zealand midfield I thought really that they struggled there, Mayer Hofflack struggling a little bit, Ralph will now have Spencer inside him to add pace and it's Cottrell to throw into the first line out of the second half, can England maintain their game, keep it at a high level, that wasn't straight, and referee Peter Marshall, you have to say, made a terrific decision at the end of that first half, yes, Clark did get down with pressure, but the pressure was on an all-black leg, and the referee was spot on, and the white-hot atmosphere of international rugby, that was 10 out of 10 for Marshall. Well, another big change there, Norm Hewitt has come on, face to face with Cockrell. They came to blows on the street, now they're on the pitch. Well, they've done it before on the street, is on the pitch as well. At Old Trafford, remember, it's when it all started, the famous Harker to New. Spencer, a couple of marvellous sidesteps by Carlos Spencer, what an impact! Couldn't find the other substitute. Hewitt. Knock on's been given. Well, now we know why there's a 50 metre billboard of Carlos Spencer outside our hotel in Auckland. That's what he can do. Brilliant play from Spencer. Interesting changes. Spencer to give that acceleration and that vision, and Hewitt to make sure they get the basics right because New Zealand basics have been poor thus far. Spencer quite comfortable in the role at centre. Look at that. Bit of Spencer magic. Well, he's got a great step and he's got pace as well. Low to the ground, very dynamic. He's a very exciting player. And the referee's coming around to check the binding here between Vickery and Dowd. Wait, wait, waiting. Vickery's bearing up very well again this afternoon. He's one of the England players who's just steadily got better on this tour. Drive early from New Zealand. You could see it there, written all over Cockrell. Just wait for the crowd. Wait, guys. Let's go. Half. Bang. Wait for it. Dawson. Bad kick. It's Cullen's ball. Good tackle from Perry on his opposite number. Through goes Fiddler. But it came off 
an England player's hand, so it will be a New Zealand scrum. Antonova looking disappointed. It looks like there's a bang to the car, but I think they'd have made that substitution anyway. Well, that's been his injury problem of late, that calf muscle. And it's been packed with ice. But you're right, it was a problem for New Zealand in the first half. The control from Hooker and Hewitt couldn't wait to get on last week. He didn't. And he was chomping at the bit again this afternoon. And there he goes, driving into Clark and Vickery. Tanu, Mertens, Radar, not quite firing. Wilson is the... And Fiddler backtracking to make an important interception. I'm not certain if Austin he is defending this afternoon. He hasn't laid a hand on Jeff Wilson. But again, New Zealand go over the top and the danger is averted. Well, it's Healy's fourth game against New Zealand in under a year. And in all of those matches to what to date, he's impressed. Yeah, but he's struggling against Wilson. It's a New Zealand team not on top of their game, but Jeff Wilson is having a sensational match. And if Hewitt's struggling, New Zealand are in difficulty because Oliver, as we saw on the bench, with an injury. And Hewitt's hobbling around and trying to run something off. Wasn't straight from Cockcroft twice now. Bad start to the half for Richard Cockrell. John Mitchell and Clive Woodward head in hand. A lot to be pleased about, but the line-out work has been poor at the start of this half. England mustn't give New Zealand soft ball. And it seems so crazy because in the first half it was exemplary in that department. Blackadder and Tromfell. Diprose tries to swing him round. Ball's there, but New Zealand driving over. To New. Mertens. Spencer to Lomu. And Lucy's made one big tackle on Lomu, but he... All he could do that time was deflect his stride until reinforcements arrived. Mertens looking unusually hesitant, and Diprose with the interception. Clark. There's no doubt New Zealand are rattled here. Dawson. Baxendall slips into fly half in attack and finds Randall. Dawson again. Now Lucy has to play fly half. Stimson. Ball back inside and... It's Caleb Ralph. That was loose from Stimson. Threw it away and it's turned over. England have based their game on not giving turnover ball. That was sloppy. Now Stimson is trying to cover the fullback position and he may be required. Blackadder and Diprose. Had a big game, Diprose. Mertens. Spencer was out on the touchline. And he gets around Stimson and Beal, and then another man as well. It was Cockrell who was left on the floor, Lomu. Brown, knock on. That's a four. You get the feeling Carlos Spencer is out to make a point in front of his home crowd. Mitchell, a right to look worried there. But again, the final error comes from New Zealand. Fiddler down, but he's having a good game. And Spencer is already starting to weave his web. Steps magnificently, doesn't he? A real blazing talent. Doesn't have the control of Andrew Mertens, but playing at second 5-8, that's a devastating combination. Dawson. Underneath this high ball, and safe and sure as always, but he runs into Kronfeld, and that's an accidental offside. So the elementary error is now coming from New Zealand. Well, how often do you see Colin make a mess of a counter-attack? Probably one hand's worth in his career, and England now have a really good attack at situation. If they can control this scrum and put a wheel on it, they can get at Andrew Mertens. Diprose off the base. 
Dawson, Lucy, Baxendall. Healy's going after it. And so is Cullen. But that's a good kick, infield, intelligent. Cullen's got no space, no time, no angle. England have the ball. And Auckland Park is not quite the Fitzpatrick party we expected. Well, there's a stunned disbelief in the crowd. And Baxendall is one of the reasons. The architect of a lot of original play. Fine take from Fiddler. It's Ben Clark shouting the orders here. Head popping out the middle in the driving seat. More weight required. It comes from Diprose and Diprose. The man to launch off the back of them all. But Cromfeld is alive to the threat. But it's in from an offside position. And it's another penalty to England. And when you think back to the first half and those missed kicks, won by Perry and won by Dawson, it could have been much closer. Issa Tola Marker has replaced Todd Blackadder. Now we know all about Marker. Excellent for the academy against England. And that's a first cap for Issa Tola Marker. He's a high impact hit man, and New Zealand at the moment need him. He's not on for the ride and the debut, he's on to do a job. 100 to 1 against England, and it's 14 7. It's a long way to go, but this is Alamo with an attitude. Well, Alamo in Auckland, could be Texas, could a few good Tex Mexes. Dawson has got to show full concentration here. Such an important three points for his team. What a lift this would give England and what a jolt it would give New Zealand. Dawson then, it's there! Clive Woodward off his seat. Punching England on, 14-10. And this is a surprise party for the Englishman here in Auckland. Heroic effort at the moment from England. They're cancelling out New Zealand. And they're taking points when they're there. And to say England have been a laughingstock here would be such an understatement. And they can make so many eat the words. Brilliant from Sanderson, now it's Fiddler. And it's on again. England can sense it. Dawson, Baxendall, Beale, men out wide. Perry, Diprose, Perry around on the loop. But the drift from New Zealand was good. Beale. But the retention is excellent again going backwards. Well, it looked for everything that was going back to New Zealand, but Bill somehow worked it back on the England side. Tackles keep raining in. New Zealand here know they're in some battle. It's their scrum, but it may not be their match. Half an hour to go. Head to toe hit on Baxendale. What's that? Issa Tolamaka, the high impact man, in with a big hit. And New Zealand need to start making these turnovers. Tanu had to go in and help out. Mertens. Healy. Offside. Well, that's an experience. Healy saw the space. Clark stood up, but Lucy, sighted with the prospect, just raced away. Bad error there. It was intelligent play from Healy. Referee just giving New Zealand the choice. The kick from where the offside was given, or the scrum back from where Healy kicked the ball. Gone for the scrum. 
Another sign that New Zealand line out. Just a little bit ropey at the moment. Going to try and put some pressure on in this scrum. It's a good control wheel. Spencer on the stretch this time. Lomu. Ralph to Cullen. But all of a sudden it's New Zealand working in tight spaces. And their attack being strangled. And nothing for Mertens out wide. So Cromford has to go through the middle. But he does so effectively with support. And there's Ita Tolamaka. Roundtree. Brilliantly saw that the ball was out and then got himself all over it. That penalty belongs to Roundtree. And I was just watching the body language of Andrew Mertens. Positive body language from those two. Mertens' shoulders shrugging in disappointment. Ball goes loose. Roundtree in so quickly. Bang on his feet. puts in a fine kick I think he thought that he got more distance than that may well have had a point well England you can see have turned over New Zealand on ten occasions on a team that prides itself on continuity great physical effort in defence Dipro did well to Angley's back there but then it was knocked on first by England then New Zealand Well, nearly catastrophe there for England's hopes. England have played simple rugby with ambition and made good decisions. They don't need to try too much extravagant stuff at the moment. They've got 25 minutes to go and they're rocking New Zealand. The likes of Ian Jones, stunned. And also the supporters. It was... Almost disaster, Lucy knocking on first. But as on our perch, we look around here, normally Eden Park is buzzing a lot, expecting a New Zealand win and just reveling in it. But everyone's in their seat and very quiet. Yeah, I think for the first time in three and a half weeks, Saturday night will echo with a couple of English voices. There goes Cullen against Healy, and Healy's missed the tackle. The flag is up, though. The flag is up. Just a foot in touch from Cullen. Well, that's the danger of the All Blacks. They're not looking shape, in much shape at the moment, but the individual skill. Oh, that's close. I don't even see a lick of paint moving. And now the crowd are involved because the replays here are played to them on a big screen and they don't like that he was skirting with touch but from that angle it didn't seem that Cullen had gone into touch so even luck going for England now and that is a first time on this trip so if England supporters feel agreed about the Ben Clark try they shouldn't because replays show there that it wasn't a score, and it was a good decision. Those same English supporters should be very happy with that decision from the touch judge. This is Tanu, and he's straightened that well. Oh, there's a big chance here. Randall Arno. Don't believe what I'm seeing. What has gone wrong with the communication? Three on one, Tane Randall. One of the best footballing number eights in the business. And watch this, magnificent from Tanuu. That's superb. He knows where his support is. He's got the big overlap. And just watch this from the All Black skipper. Shocking. It was a gimme. Well, Tanuu had done all the hard work. He has every right to look disgruntled. But there's two tries within the last couple of minutes that have got away from New Zealand. England now have to regroup. Shows two things, doesn't it? A, that luck is going with England, but B, that New Zealand are so dangerous. Get him out, get him out. England must get this ball and keep the ball. It was a loose kick from Lucy, and it was the counter again. 
keep it and control it. Clark's take. Dawson. Baxendale. Perry. Just became isolated because the pass made him static. A couple of these loose passes, these long passes are not working for England at the moment. And now Perry's not at home, and Wilson is going to get the score. Wilson's in again. Below for England, and if one man was going to do it, it's Jeff Wilson. He's New Zealand's man of the day, he's their man of the season. Great play again. Healy's outgunned the control, the footballing skills good. Thank you, and he's got every right to France. Spencer making an impact, beautifully weighted kick, and that's pace. Jeff Wilson. Well, as we know, Healy is no slouch, but today he's not been able to live with, as you say, the best winger in the world. Well, there's still a lot for Woodward to be pleased with, but that just takes New Zealand away. And the signs are that that try, the one that was coming from a way off, wasn't it? They got away with Cullen. And now Carlos Spencer, he seems to be doing everything since he's come on. John Hart was peering on, Carlos Spencer can do no wrong for his coach or team, 21-10, and now it's a long way back. Carlos Spencer knows Eden Park inside out, some luxury when Andrew Mertens kicks one from the touchline and then you replace it with Spencer, who nails it. Jonah Lomu leaves the action. And that means a first cap for Joel Evendiri. Well, and Lomu's had a poor game. I've been disappointed with him. Evendiri deserves this chance. The GM Bourne had to wait for qualification. And the whole of New Zealand couldn't wait. Now they've got the chance to see him. Burton's covers. Vindiri's first touch is Lomoreskin style. Marker. Tanu. And that's Spencer firing it away. What a difference Carlos Spencer's made. That's a superb kick. New Zealand driving England backwards there. Full 60 metres. Vindiri being introduced to the crowd. I think they knew who he was. Big roar when he came on. You know, Lomu didn't really get out of second gear today. He's had a poor match. I thought that would come sooner rather than later. Diffros, Vickery. No frills from Dawson. Wilson has taken a quick throw into himself. And he finds Ello Brown. Let off the lead. To New, to Marker. He'd need a choke, not a lead. Merton spins it along the line from Spencer. Cullen. Cullen with a little show of the ball. And there's plenty of support. Ralph was across. Plenty of cover from England as well. They just grab Cullen. Merton's out again. And England being tested to the full here by Isa Tolamarka. What a burst up the middle. And the penalty follows. Hands on the deck. 
right in front of the ref. The replacements in the all black colours are making a big difference. Clive Woodward looking rueful. Issa Tolamaka and Carlos Spencer are giving an extra dimension. That was a heck of a surge, and they're not going for the three points. You could sense a change in the move. Suddenly the confidence is back, and it's England who are on the back foot and on their back. Yes, they're going for the killer touch. Ian Jones won't be part of it. And Mark Carter will come on. Now, he's not a second row. He's a back row player. But here's Issa Tolamaka, who may have to move into the lock position. Direct and dynamic. It won't worry him. Might worry the bloke's pushing against him. Yeah, he's got in there, Mark Carter, much frailer. Out that back row forward. They've gone for a pacey back row now. With Jones off, Carter, Cronfeld and Randall. Pace. Well, Randall was toppled by Dawson. What an important challenge that was. It may, though, only have delayed the day of reckoning. You can see Jeff Wilson crouched on the left-hand side. He's just switching wings all position. And England don't know where he's going to strike from next. Wilson already with two tries. Now England really must try and work hard, stop the wheel, because if New Zealand get a wheel with Randall, they've got Cullen and Vindiri on a big blind side. Tanu warns Dawson to stay onside. Again, the scrum stands up, Tanu, Cullen, staying on his feet, not floating. Tanu, slapped on by Lucy. Not considered deliberate, just a scrum. Just a scrum, he says. And that scrum's in your own 22 against the All Blacks, coming back into it and feeling better about themselves. Well, England scrummed superbly there. They didn't let New Zealand put the wheel on, and that's why Christian Cullen just didn't get the space we saw last week with Drew Cock off. England said they'd make New Zealand work with 15 men. And they're living up to their words. And the midfield combination of Lucy and Baxendon, the way they mixed and matched, they've been a defence and attacking success. Well, let's face it, England have been extremely wooden in midfield on this tour. We've heard lots about Johnny Wilkinson, he hasn't been able to deliver yet. Baxendon has come in and he's just given a little bit of variety and balance. It's not all work. You've got to ask questions, and Baxter in particular is doing that. By the way, the man sitting behind the glass, John Hart. That is, in fact, the cricket scoreboard here at Eden Park. It's on halfway. Like Carries Brook last week, this ground doubles as Test Match Cricket Stadium. But all about rugby today, and hard rugby as well. New Zealand have been given a test in the truest sense of the word, but now it's Vendera. Well, that was sweet from the All Blacks. That was superb. Merns with a missed pass. The little change of angles. And watch Spencer's hand there. Basketball pot. Joely Vindiri. No, no, no. Tim Stimson, you're nowhere near him. Brilliant change of angles, though. They brought Ralph in with Cullen and Wilson decoys. The little pot. Two on one. Vindiri's got the pace. He doesn't need Cullen. He's over. Lovely change of angle. Wilson's the decoy. He holds one in the middle, and there's the quality pass, and that's the try. A popular try scorer. It's been worth the wait for Vindiri.
And again, it's the replacements making all the difference. Second wave of Kiwis heard in England now. Orchestrated by that man, Carlos Spencer, having a dream second half. And Mertens knows that Spencer's on the pitch, doesn't he? Lost his kicking role. And that's why. He's got the Midas touch today, his Carlos Spencer. And you could say the same of Vin Deary. Hardly been on the field already. An all-black try scorer. And now England have got to hold on because New Zealand haven't finished traditionally well in the last 20 for a couple of years. But they really are catching fire now. The fuse is lit. And if New Zealand were to run away with it here, that would be hard on England because they've given so much. And this is all about concentrating the mind, keeping it together for Clive Woodward's team. And they will get on that plane to South Africa and next week's test match in Cape Town in a lot better heart. With a spring in their step that no one expected. But they've got to keep this ball and look after it. Dipro is round to support Clark. Dawson. The Beal can find no way through. Has kicked well when he's had the opportunity. Well, more importantly, his options of when to kick, when to pass, and when to hold on have been good. Batsendale's had a balanced performance today. Is he on? Is he like on? So on comes Steve Ravenscroft to win his second cap. I think it's Austin Healy who's gone off with Nick Beale going out to the wing. Well, Healy has not enjoyed his afternoon. I wonder whether his shoulder's not quite right, but he's certainly been given the run around by Wilson. Stimson. He took that straight away and had no chance to get it away before the men arrived, so that is why England will get the put-in, even though Stimson didn't get it down. Tackle almost instant, so it's a fair call. The Stimson showing his full-back skills there. Hasn't really enjoyed his tour yet again, but that was a good take. Anton Oliver, he's not enjoyed his day. Dawson taking the free kick quickly. Sanderson, that was high. It'll be a penalty, but the referee lets it develop. Ben Clark wants to take it as far as he can. Dawson, Baxendale. Breaking down in midfield just when England needed it to work. Dawson again. Baxendale. Dipros. And it's been lost. And it's Cullen. And Cullen will have there's only one winner of the race. Stimson is trying to get there and he's done really well. Done really well. Cullen had some ground to make up, but you always thought he was going to get there first. Wilson, Spencer, what a pass. He's a telemarker. Just like Mendiri. Over on debut. Well, we've seen the downside of New Zealand rugby, but that try gave you the very best. The pace of this man, Christian Cullen. Stimson had the angle, that's why he got there. He was burning everyone. But watch how he stays on his feet. He doesn't give the play away, he's up straight away. Stimson, he gets it nicked, and the vision of Jeff Wilson, quite superb. Off the left hand, a beautiful pass, Spencer. Sublime skills and the power of Marker. Another one for the bench. A bench inspired victory for New Zealand. Some useful talent coming through in the new generation.
Can Carlos Spencer make a mistake? You wouldn't bet on it, would you? Spencer. Well, he has. That one just wide. But the final result, which was in doubt earlier, is certainly not now at 33-10. But there's also no doubt that this has been a much, much better England performance. Yes, England have played very well. There's a lot of players missing, we know all about that, that's well documented. But let's talk about the 15 on the park. They've played with a lot more control, a lot more vigour, and they really have made New Zealand fight. Tanu, talking of fight. And Dowd, and the rest of the forwards, Tanu back on his feet. Mertens, New Zealand for the first time starting to enjoy themselves, but they won't enjoy that as Cullen lost it. But Mertens onto Vindiri, the ball wasn't knocked forward, he went backwards. Sanderson. Suddenly there's a bit of space for New Zealand, England looking as if they're tiring after their efforts. Offside, New Zealand. Well, England, they will keep going for the next ten. Dawson's decision here. I think is the right one. Into the corner, control the ball. Fresh legs for the last ten. So Kokrilov, <laughs> thanks to the reception, he says, and Phil Greening is the replacement hooker. Well, he survived a tete -a tete with Jonah Lomer in the first half, so 42,000 Aucklanders won't be a problem for Cockrell. Greening, straight into it with this throw. Sims got a hand on it, it was up to Diprows to clean the ball up. And then it's quiet. England got it on the floor, and that's why it's their pudding. That was good work by Clark and Diprose. Diprose's reaction so fast. A lot of people thought that he was not up to it physically, but he's played very well. And Ben Clark then drove it on. The balance in the back row is excellent. Clark. Well, it was almost on a plate for Dawson until Randall ruined his dinner. Greening, Dawson, Lucy, Ravenscroft. And Dawson's disgust is at the stray New Zealand hand and he gets his penalty. And Dawson just won't give up, will he? So much fight in him. Greening, there's no scrum half, so Sims. You see the way he kept the ball there, didn't throw the pass, so England should be able to recycle and go. Ben Clark driven back. But just like in Dunedin, the England forwards inspiring a strong finish. But unlike Dunedin, the whole England performance has played with a lot more balance and ambition, and that's made it easier for the forwards. 23 points the difference and just for a moment it looks as if England won't be able to cut the deficit as they give away rather needless free kick Perry his enthusiasm burning through all the time Matt Perry Roundtree Gamely off the floor, Lucy, Vindiri, Tanu has a juggle but still got it, and he gives it to Lucy, now Lucy head down and go, Wilson lined him up and came in off the wing, Dipro didn't knock it on, no he did said the referee, he's at number nine, lost a five, get well the man accused of the knock on is Dawson, get up, he's at, just in danger of spilling over, get out of it, 
It's been a physical test match. Lucy, head down straight for the line. What a tackle by Wilson. It's a good black ball. White player number nine, Austin Ford. What a tackle. Lucy going for the line. Wilson, perfect technique. Sides it into a missile of a hit. We saw the knock back from Diffrose and then in came Dawson. And then it was a knock on. They're crashing fast. But there's a lot more now for Clive Woodward and John Mitchell, Mitchell to work with in a positive way. And with Cape Town to come in a week, that's vital, short term and long term. And we are seeing people asking questions and really being positive. Though. Matthew Perry has been very good counter attacking. And Ben Clark, once again, I think, has reopened a debate about his presence as an international rugby player. And the likes of Lucy coming on leaps and bounds in this environment. And Baxendall has answered a lot of questions. Perry. Caught by Spencer. There it is. Dawson. Clark. Lucy. Ravenscroft. Stimpson. Lucy. Seems to be popping up everywhere, the number 10. But he mustn't kick these balls away, it's dangerous. Cullen just gathers pace so quickly, doesn't he? Immediately into his stride, Cullen. Vindiri waits, but the ball won't come to him. Has to go looking for it after Ralph is tackled. Cromfell. Great stuff now. Both sides just slugging it out. Dow. Tanu. Mertens, oh, in comes Ralph, and Caleb Ralph lines up Perry, doesn't make the tackle, and the captain is there, Randall, to round it off. Tough on England. 38-10. Soon to be 40, England don't deserve to suffer like that. But this is lovely vision. Caleb Ralph with all the pace. Merton saw the gap. Perry for once misses his man. Back to Null there, but it's easy for Randall. Great running lines from the number eight. That's a natural footballer in support. And that's the first we've really seen of Caleb Ralph. But England don't deserve to lose by 30 points. But New Zealand, well, they can score from anywhere. That's why they're such dangerous opponents. It is 40. Woodward already working out what he's going to say when he gets back in the dressing room to say how to tighten it all up in those situations. But they are, as you say, dangerous from deep. And to have such pace in the back row as Cromfeld and Randall supply. And it's an inexperienced England team. They've done so well for so long, but just now we're starting to see them kick a few balls away and they're giving some balls and New Zealand are making them pay well maybe all black supporters wouldn't begrudge England a try at the end or no <laughs> I don't think that, that's a true statement they do like to rub the face in the dirt but for so long this afternoon, it hasn't been New Zealand calling the tune. Although there is never anything glorious in defeat. That is an all-black philosophy. Sanderson. Roundtree. That was good work from Perry again. Setting it up for Clark and the pack. Beal, Lucy, dropped it. That's a four guys, now Greenies, black scrum. Pity. There was just the glimmer of an opening there. A good decision from Bill. And just Lucy, just looking a bit tired now, but he's played so little senior rugby. But really, it's amazing he's kept going so long. Same can be said for this whole England team. They've been up against it, and they've never quit. Matt Perry again, running from fullback. Always a threat. 
an extra dimension. It just reiterates, though, doesn't it, the error Clive Woodward made in picking Perry at centre in Australia. So much more dangerous from fullback. He gives England an attacking edge that they just don't have with anyone else at fullback. And I don't think Clive Woodward will be messing around with Perry's position again. There are quite a few bruised and battered England players. There's a time difference on the way to South Africa. It's going to be another tough week with a hard match at the end of it against a South African team trying to run into form. Tanu, Mertens, Stimson clings on to Vindiri, but Kronfeld to Mertens, Tanu, Carter's there. And there's options again if they spin it long. Wilson feels he can do anything this afternoon. Scoring a try from there, though, is perhaps a step too far, even for Wilson. Hit high by Greening, but now they're behind England's defence again. Merton's trying to unlock the England midfield. Ravenscroft, the fresh player, getting in. Ralph Tanu, who's full of running, isn't he? That's Carl Hoft who's come on. He finds Olo Brown, his prop partner. Issa Tullamarka. Right. Get the feeling that England just won the whistle now. Cullen. Chances again. Ralph Cullen. Might well have been away had he taken that. Just Perry to beat. England get the relief of a scrum. And a rare error from Christian Cullen. It's not been his afternoon. Great speed. Ralph on the inside. The pass isn't a great one. And England get the pudding. It's been a harrowing last 20 minutes for England. They've seen a lot of individuals of world class. But this is a building performance from England. Because it doesn't get much tougher than this. Well, we tried to say that after the A game, didn't we? But that was played in such awful conditions, it was almost impossible to assess. But this is a massive step up, and yes, now there is something for Woodward and Mitchell to build on, even though that team is going to lose again. Randall. And England will become the first test-playing side to lose every match on a tour of New Zealand. That's not a record to be proud of. Your hands down, please. You're on the Greening being warned. Well, Phil Greening needs to control himself. He did this last week. He came on, threw punches, swinging the arms again. He has to be careful. You can watch him now. The bald head comes in high. Tanu. Spencer. If ever a player deserves a score in this second half, it's Carlos Spencer. Marker. The crowd are demanding a try, screaming for it, and they may well get it. Spencer to to do. England hanging on. At 40-10 down, it's all over. Brave, brave England display. But it's New Zealand who triumph and win by 40 to 10. Well, they felt the rapier of New Zealand at the end, but that is England's best performance by a long, long way. For those watching the game, remember the performance of Jeff Wilson. It was quite magnificent. Spencer came on and he made the difference. He gave them the cutting edge that they didn't have in the first half. But Woodward will know when they go back to England with all their guns, there are chinks in this all-black team. This was a brave performance by this 15, but let's not forget there's more to come. And England, well, at last, there's some light in what has been a journey into the heart of darkness. And it was the Benjamin who came on and made such a difference. Vindiri, Spencer, Hewitt, Marker, all played a part in that second period.
Yeah, there was some tremendous rugby. New Zealand really did turn it on when they had to. But Josh Baxendall, well, he can be proud of himself. He had a good game. I thought 